Agriculture is regarded as the backbone of Kenya's economy, so much so that many communities, especially those living in rural areas, depend on it as a main source of livelihood. But a number of youth living in urban and rural areas have taken up farming ventures of late. While some have navigated and succeeded in their journeys, others have encountered numerous challenges. That's why on Business Now this afternoon, we are focusing on the ups and downs of youth in farming. My name is Yvonne Okwara Matole. These are the highlights. We focus on the youth factor in agricultural transformation. As a new generation of farmers takes center stage, what are the challenges that these young farmers face? And in our Made in Kenya series, What's in a Clean Cooking Stove? We get the lessons from the use of wisdom jikos. All right, and we'll get to our conversation in a moment, and we encourage you as well to participate in this. Please use the hashtag BusinessNow at Citizen TV Kenya and at Yvonne Okwara. If you've got any questions, any comments about youth in farming, youth in agriculture, youth in agribusiness, please do share your questions and your thoughts with us. My guests on the show this afternoon is uh, a man you've known in probably different capacities, Gilad Miller, who um, is a garlic farmer, but I, I know you're asking about the other one we'll talk about that and how he's involved in garlic farming and what his experiences are with that particularly when it comes to young people and looking at the barriers that are involved in that and how we're able to overcome them all right also on the show today we have a lady who's passionate about it Wangari Korea farmer on fire that is what she does on YouTube as well as actually on the ground she's a farmer herself she's an author she is a farmer and she's passionate about both and also who'll be joining us live from Naivasha, from Kalra, which is the Kenya Agricultural and Research, uh, Livestock Research Organization. Boniface Akuku is the director of ICT. Those are the guests we have on the show this afternoon. So please do stand by. We've got a great conversation coming up. How to make money if you're a young person in agriculture or agribusiness. But first, let's take a quick look at stories that are making headlines this afternoon on Business Now. And I'd like us to begin with a Kenya gross domestic product that is projected to grow by 5.8% in 2021. This is according to NCBA's Regional Economic Outlook report. The growth forecast, which is an upward revision to the bank's initial baseline estimate of 5.3% in May of 2021, is supported by a better than expected evolution of the public health crisis that continues to support quicker softening of mobility restrictions. Kenya Breweries has launched a competition for the design of a new logo as it looks to mark its 100th birthday next year. The competition is open to design artists from Kenya aged 21 to 25 and is intended to culminate in next generation logo for one of Kenya's oldest companies. Finally, Zamara Group has entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Kenya National Federation of Juakali Associations. The move is aimed at driving financial inclusion to the informal sector to encourage savings. All right, so youth in agriculture is the conversation on business now today. And my guests are with me here, Gilad Milo, Wangari Korea, and of course, Boniface Akuku, who is joining us virtually. Um, I think I want to start with one question all around um, to you is, does, does agriculture or does farming amongst youth have an image problem you know, with the youth? Gilad, I'll start with you. Um, first of all, yes. Uh, it's something, you know, we've been dealing with for years in Kenya, trying to make farming look cool, look sexy. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, people have a different perception of what hard work is. They saw their parents, you know, young kids have seen their parents on the shamba and, and they're thinking, you know, they didn't do so well, why should I try it? The reality is that what's available to them today was not necessarily available to their parents. Drip irrigation, technologies, things like that. Um, plus, at the end of the day, what's your definition of cool? If you can bring money home right. and help your family, I think that's very cool. And, and you raise an important point because at the base of it, cool, sexy, I think for young people, and let's be honest for just about anybody, is can I make money out of it? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not the cleanest of jobs. It's 
you, you have to get your hands dirty. That's what it is. You're dealing with the earth. Wangari, is this something that, that you experience as well? Just an image problem in terms of how much money people can make out of it? It yes, seems fairly yes. painstaking. <laughs> it is. And even when I was growing up, I grew up in the village, I never thought of it as a career. So once I was done with high school, I immediately went to college to get a desk job. So for one, my parents didn't, you know, mentor me into becoming a farmer because they also, it didn't click that this is a career option for me as well and also I find a lot of stigma uh, on my way up as I go becoming a farmer and a business person in agribusiness because a lot of people are shocked and they're like wow what are they you're doing this yeah. uh? what do they say you're doing they're farming? like those nails can't farm there's <laughs> no way <laughs> but as Gillard says there's technology I yeah. don't have to break my back right yes. okay yeah and, and <laughs> that's very interesting um, Boniface so who's joining us uh, from Naivasha is the director ICT at Calro. I don't know if he's um, already with us. Boniface, uh, same question to you. Does farming have an image problem, particularly amongst the youth in Kenya? Yes, Ivonne, it is true. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. Thanks, Boniface. Carry on. Yeah. It is true that uh, agriculture has an image problem among the youth, uh, what I would call an identity crisis in agriculture. Uh, this is because the agriculture has been presented wrongly. So it's the way we have presented agriculture. Uh, back from uh, young days, uh, your parents will encourage you to read to become a doctor. Most of the examples that will be given of a successful people, agriculture was none of them. And even to date, I don't think we have been intentional about presenting agriculture. Uh, to make it uh, uh, look, be looked as, as an enterprise and to be seen as, as a business and to be seen as a career. And also to note that most of the richest pe people in the world are actually in agriculture. Yeah. Uh, forgetting, uh, not knowing that everything, everybody needs food. And COVID has just taught us that um, so long as you have food and you're healthy, any other things can stop. All the plants were stopped. Yeah. All the all, all all the electronics were not running. But people were eating and struggling to become healthy. So I think it's true that there's an identity problem in agriculture. Okay. Yeah. And, and and that's interesting because agriculture is the mainstay of Kenya's economy. And yet, you know, we've got um, this this image crisis and identity crisis, as Boniface calls it. Boniface, we'll come back to you in a moment to talk about some of the support that Calro gives to young people, um, you know, in farming and also just, you know, changing that image. Um, but before we go any further, I want to qualify that the people who are here with me are farmers. So let me start by understanding exactly what you do. Gilad, we've known you as, you know, a diplomat. We've known you as a musician. And yet I, somebody asked me, Gilad, what would he be talking about when we're talking about agriculture yeah. and particularly with the youth? But just take us through that, uh, you know, that, that history and, and, and your passion with agriculture. I mean, I mean, yeah, first of all, you know, when people show up at the farm today, the first thing, Semam Penzi, how you, you know, you have to sing, you have to sing, otherwise they don't believe it's you. But I mean, you know, I, I, I worked, uh, I was a diplomat here, you know, working, uh, and we had the Kibwezi irrigation project back then that Israel was running. And then later I worked eight years for Amiran. And you remember the whole greenhouse revolution with the Red Cross, uh, with Giuliani, who was then our brand ambassador. Uh, um, so we were very involved in kind of hyping and, 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 and at that time we were the only ones doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember being literally the first person in Kenya to put our business, agribusiness, on Facebook at the time and Twitter and people told me, you don't understand what social media is for. <laughs> you know, and people were shocked at the time that we were doing that. But it really worked and we had tens of thousands of youth engaging in back then we were growing tomatoes in the small greenhouses and, and it's evolved a lot since then. There's so much more available since then. And today, um, you know, when COVID started, of course, I'm a musician, everybody knows. Um, when COVID started, a friend offered me and said, you know, let's start a farm. Mm -hmm. And I'd always wanted to have my own farm, you know, to do my own thing. So we went and found a plot in Isenia and we started to grow garlic. And, you know, fast forward two years and people are calling me Gilad Garlic everywhere I go. <laughs> um, 
because I've become, you know, very vocal about yeah. it. And so the way we work is, of course, we grow our own garlic. And yes, I've learned by myself. My partner's an expert who's been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. um, but we also work with farmers now. We contract farmers because we've managed to find a market. So we contract farmers. So we supply the seeds and we train the farmers. We supply the spray program and we buy back if they want. Yeah, if they yeah. can sell for better, good, go for it, you know. But we buy back for those who want, you know, whatever they're growing. And, and, and tell me the profile of, of the farmers you're working with. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. if you look, let's say right now we are above 60 farmers across the country, from Isiolo to Embu, we have farmers all over the country. More than half are under 30 years old. Um, so, I mean, very, very young generation of farmers, go-getters, people with energy, and, and, you know, they're doing it in all different styles, different places. Some guys are doing half an acre. You've got young couples. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got like a whole bunch of young couples who have come and, and this is their thing yeah. and they have like an acre or two acres they've inherited and they're decided they've decided to invest in this and they're making money people are really making real money not not small change you mm. know hundreds of thousands of shillings um, it's yeah. going really really well and we'll talk about that in a moment how to make money uh, Wangari uh, you know Gilad is telling us about how he'd started with putting things on social media and at yeah. the time people were saying you know what on earth but you are now driving that for many who don't know you know your YouTube channel is called farmer on fire yeah. so tell us about what you do I uh, guess so when I started out I had um, I remembered my mom had a kitchen garden so let me set up one at least I'll be able to cut the costs of vegetables if you look at how much you spend in a year just on vegetables it's ridiculous so mm -hmm. I wanted to cut that cost and then my friends who are not born from the village would ask me Wangare how do you actually grow skuma weekend I'll be like you just put it on the ground and they'll be like well, <laughs> really and so I would make them short clips and then that's how the YouTube channel was born because I would go to the aggravate and tell them choose this and don't choose this seed because mm -hmm. of this and this and and <clears throat> the interesting about social media or digitization of everything is that you're able to get a bigger reach people are able to learn so much I call it YouTube University where yeah. you can get so much information and you can be able to also make whatever you're doing cool yeah yes yeah yes. and how long have you had the youtube channel um it's been up for a year and a half now. a year and a half and yes. you've also written books on the same yes yeah yes. okay so um let me understand uh, and we'll come to boniface in a moment um there's been the age-old challenge or barrier we hear for youth in farming uh, being two major ones access to capital mm -hmm. um, which typically might be if you go to a bank you would typically use your land as collateral yeah and yet even that land is also a problem um, is this a myth or has this changed Gilad. I find that a lot of a lot of young kids have access to land and I see I mean I'm chatting on my Facebook with like a hundred people a day and almost all of them have land I find that the challenge is water not okay. land uh -huh. so how many of you have water and they have a shamba but they rely more on rain uh, with a crop like garlic I wouldn't even risk it because it's very water intensive so and a borehole is an expensive thing. So if you're near a river, you're lucky, you know, things like that. But I find water to be a bigger challenge than land. And then, like you said, capital as well. But I mean, I've got a couple, I mean, you know, Kenyans are hustlers, okay? And the youth are hustlers. I have a massive respect for Kenyan youth, you know, the ones who really push it. And you find that guys find a way to make proposals to all of these uh, microfinance or to banks who have agricultural loans, and they come up with these proposals. So for example, the fact that we give a contract mm -hmm. helps you to get a loan. So we've had a couple of, of farmers who are working with us who asked us, can you give us a commitment on the contract so that we can go and get the loan, which you know we helped with and they went and they got the alone so there are ways you know it, it's a question of not taking no for an answer mm -hmm. and pushing through and doing and believing in yourself that you can do and you can accomplish and like I said literally 100% of our farmers all of them are doing well right now most of them are young and and they didn't know garlic when they came to us yeah. some didn't even have any experience in farming 
So we trained, we taught, we follow along in a WhatsApp world. Even if you're an Isiolo, send me pictures, you know, and, yeah. and I'll help you out, you know. Yeah. So it makes it a lot easier, the technology. We do WhatsApp video calls from my farm to another farm. We're in Isinia. Our farm is called Oleraha. Um, <laughs> you know, we're surrounded Maasai, so, so that's what we named it. But we're sitting at Oleraha Farm, and we're talking to farmers literally across the country on WhatsApp video. They show me their crop. I say, okay, look, it looks like you're not watering enough. You need to be weeding more. Did you apply this? Did you apply that? But technology is in our favor here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wangari, what's uh, your experience? What's been the are main you, challenge you for you? Yes, mm -hmm. in, in, in agriculture, in the farming you've done, Gilad says water is the main challenge. Yes. What has it been like for you? I'd like to add on backland because for myself, I am an urban farmer. So there is this thing called telephone farming. Mm -hmm. So the challenge of telephone farming is that you want farming to become your side hustle because you have already maybe unemployment and you would like to leverage your risks mm -hmm. and have a side hustle. So farming can be a good way to do that. But then there is the challenge of proximity to enough space. In the city, we know there is yeah. a congestion challenge. Right. As myself, I have an eighth of an acre, even though... <laughs> <laughs> You're farming on an eighth of an acre. I'm, I'm doing, um, I'm, I'm, I'm asking my neighbors to give me land, okay. which they are openly giving them because I'm giving them value back. Okay. I'm telling them, hi, my name is Wangari, that's my house. I would like to use your land as you wait for it to, you know, the yeah. value to go up or something like that. I'm going to fence it out and irrigate and use your land and I'm going to make sure that I give you value back. So if there is a road passing, I will let you know about it. If it's rained like today, Day, yeah. come with your boots I will be your contact person on the ground you don't have to pay me you don't have to employ me if Kenya power is coming to drop meters and drop lines because they only do that for the people who are present yeah. I will be your guy I'll be your connection for all these things and most of all I wouldn't let your land get grabbed if I see okay. anyone circling around okay. here so that's so how you solve the yes, issue yes, of, yes. Of, of, of land getting access to that yes. and that's 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 interesting um, you know in, in a sense. Boniface, um, what for you are the main barriers uh, that youth face in, in farming or agriculture? I think uh, I would say that yes, land could be a problem, water could be a problem, but I think uh, most likely it is information which is a problem or lack of information. Mm -hmm. Even in this, uh, so we are still not being fair because we are still talking about uh, land and water, which I didn't definitely agree. But then I would like to say that we are still presenting agriculture wrongly because agriculture does not necessarily mean tilling the land, does not necessarily mean farming. So we should present agriculture as an enterprise where we look at, okay, I don't have a land, but where within the value chains where I come in, uh, could I do uh, agriculture, I mean, could I provide services? Mm -hmm. uh, could I do aggregation? Uh, there are aspects of the input aggregation, there are aspects of output aggregation, marketing, there are aspects of value addition, there are a number of aspects of uh, trying to help farmers access market. So I think if you present a as an enterprise, then we look at different enterprises within the value chain. So when land becomes a problem, then I said, okay, I don't have land, so where can I fit in? If water becomes a problem because of climate change, which I agree, very true, is a real problem, then where do I come in? Uh, if finance is a problem, how do I start small? Mm. Uh, uh, it does not have to be actually the actual dealing of the land. Mm. So we have to do a mindset change uh, to present agriculture as an enterprise so that we, we look at it from a, a broader dimension as opposed to looking at it from actually going to my farm uh, looking for a piece of land and tilling. Of course, that's also important because that's the essence of it. If you don't till the land, there's nothing to aggregate. Yeah. If you don't till the land, there's nothing to sell. But again, let's also admit that there are other options that we could also take. So I think a lack of information or lack of the right knowledge is another barrier that I will talk about. Yeah, uh, and it's so important that you mention that because there are so many uh, points of entry across the value chain. And, and, and that value chain and even the manner in which it functions or works now, Boniface, is significantly different from what it was before. There's a lot of tech that's involved in you know, so many aspects across the, the agricultural value chain, correct? I mean, you would know this, being director of ICT at Calro. Very true, Ivonne. Uh, and actually, the it is true that that is a to total change in, in the in the way we have been working in Calro. We realize that some of this problem 
that um, uh, if we do continue the conventional the traditional approaches, then we are going to lose out the youth. And therefore, what we have embarked on in Calrum is to digitize our information and, and uh, uh, not only to digitize them, but to also make them accessible. But not only to make them accessible, but to also make them usable. So we have basically addressed three problems using technology. One, we have made the information and knowledge available so that can guide a young person where's the entry point for me. And then we, after making digitizing them, we also make them accessible. And that's why we have been able to develop mobile application. We've been able to set up a call center where the, 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 the young people can call. It's both agent-based and agent-less. They can talk to an agent. They can get recorded messages. We have also put them, uh, we're also sending SMSs. We also have knowledge portals so that they can be able to access. But uh, lastly, we have also made this more usable because you could all digit another another change that's been happening in the sector that people have been digitizing the information but they're not make them usable they're not make them user friendly mm. so we have simplified them downscale them put them in videos audios illustrations pictures so to make it quite simple and simplify the language from the technical research to a language that any local person can understand so this is what we've been doing to ensure that um, we attract the youth to agriculture and also to also make sure that for with the information they can also use, uh, become service providers within the value chain. Uh -huh. Thank you, Ivan. Yeah, uh, and thanks for that. I, I saw you guys nodding your heads yeah. uh, with that. Gilad, you want to talk I mean, I really agree. He made, uh, Boniface made two excellent points. One is the fact that to be a farmer doesn't necessarily mean getting your hands dirty. Yeah, it's good to know. But I mean, I've got farmers who are investors, okay, agripreneurs. But the people they're employing on the farm, so employment, okay, is Shamba boy, you know, this or that. So a lot of the time when people come to our farm to be trained, they're coming with their farm managers, with their Shamba boys, Shamba girls, whoever. And so they're creating employment. Mm -hmm. uh, what Wangari mentioned about telephone farmers. So I'm, you can be a telephone farmer, but you need to be a micromanager at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be involved. involved. It can't be really long distance. Yeah. The other thing Boniface was saying, which I really connect to, is the issue of availability of information and the problem of misinformation. Uh -huh. There's a lot of people who are kind of cheating each other uh, to do anything just to sell. Right. So I mean, for example, if I tell you garlic, <laughs> people are drying the garlic, breaking it up and selling it for cloves as if that's what you planned. In reality, it's supposed to be six months between garlic that's harvested and garlic, garlic that's germinated and planted. So what people are doing is kind of cheating each other and the lack of information. And people are promising, plant 100 kg, you'll get six tons. Yes. When the reality is actually plant 400 kg, you'll get four to five tons, which is more conservative and real. So there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of cheating and... and it, it causes a mess in a sector. Again, I'm only looking at one sector, yeah. but it's true across the board. And, yeah. and how, yeah, how do you also deal with the craze? Um, I think the one we all remember is the quail craze. You yes. know, yeah. it was, this is great. And so everybody goes into <laughs> it and you flood it. And there is more supply than there is demand. And yes. uh, we all know what happened to that. Okay. So how do you deal with people? Because there's many people who say, look, I. I want to make money and I want to make money quickly. Yeah. Um, so um, just to add on, on the previous question, yeah. it is on thinking about, th um, think of agriculture as anything that feeds mankind. Okay. And think now backwards, how can I supply that? Is it a drink? Is it a beverage? Is it dog food? Is it animal feed? Think broadly and then think solutions and take a direction on that. For myself, as I realized the limitation of space, I went into mushroom farming, which needs very small space. Mm -hmm. I went into rabbit farming, which also needs small space. Strawberry farming, just a small piece will give you so much produce. Mm -hmm. And then just to go back on this coming, yeah. there has been a lot of drama around land, around produce, and around, I think people are hungry, as Gilad said, Africans um, and Kenyans specifically. We, we, we just need some excitement and we go for it. Yeah. So there is a um, need for us to do research, for us to respect the process of doing our analysis. And Where do you get your information from? Um, so 
when you wanted to go into yeah. strawberry farming, for yeah. instance, or rabbit farming, mm -hmm. do you find access? Did you find access so to paid information? Paid courses challenge? helps. Okay. I know a lot of people want free things, and yes, the YouTube channel is free, and you can get as much information. But as you're doing your research, include somewhere some something that will cost you something. Also, even your internal system will be more invested. Mm -hmm. If I know I have to go to Oleraha, it's not close. I have to make an effort, probably spare the day, go listen, take notes, that kind of thing, and be on the ground. There are so many people who want to start something just because my parents know how to yeah. farm this. Or well, because I've seen one guy it. doing strawberry yes. farming, so it's something I can do. Yes, and that's not the case. Treat it as a business. If you were to go to Marikiti today or, or, or Gikomba today and start doing Mutumba, you wouldn't just walk around and start it. You mm. would take your time, figure out where my clients were what is what is necessary in all these parts and that's what we are saying um, even as the color guy is saying treat agriculture as a business any other business right. give it that respect yeah and yeah. I think that's that's exactly what we said treat it as an enterprise yes you know, just to tap into what Wangari is saying and what you were saying earlier easy money okay yeah. Listen, my father told me there's no such thing, okay? So, I mean, and, and this is hard work. For anybody who's doing agribusiness well and is succeeding, you better believe they put their sweat, their heart, you know, their time into it. So there's no such thing as easy money. Cross that off the table, yeah? After that, it takes, like, like Wangari said, investment and research and planning, etc. cetera. Um, I mean, on our side, we try to package the whole thing. So we don't charge for the training, but we don't just give away training. Mm -hmm. We train farmers growing with our seeds that means someone who's already got skin in the game someone who's already agreed to invest yes I'll train you yes we'll, we'll give the spray program I'll be online with farmers regularly but it's people who have invested already mm -hmm. just plain training which is something which is very kind of commonly people want the free training yeah. I really don't believe in it. I don't believe in just general knowledge because the real learning process of agribusiness, agriculture, comes from experience. It comes, comes from, from doing. Yes. Comes from doing. By the way, I'm not ruling mm -hmm. out the academia. You can go and study agriculture yeah. in university, but you're really not. I mean, a, a professor in university can teach you the theory of growing a tomato, but he's not going to know how to recognize bacteria wilt until he's experienced it himself. And that's the truth with farming on the ground. The best teacher the only teacher in agriculture is experience and doing it. Absolutely. Boniface, um, I don't know if you get this question when people come to Calro. Um, do they ask which crop makes money? <laughs> <laughs> which one should I yeah. plant? In December yeah, can, or January, it, which one should I plant? I'm sure you get this question a lot. Which one? Yeah. Is it tomato? Is it onions? Is it, um, you know, rearing chicken for egg production? Do you get that question and how do you respond? Yeah, we get that question a lot because uh, particularly when you start talking agriculture as a business and every person who invests in a business wants to make money, uh, there is there's no point of investing if there's no money you're making. Uh, but what I would say is that um, uh, if you focus just on one segment of um, how can I make money, then you might lose it all. I think it's good to look at it uh, end to end uh, because to, for you to make that money, you need to understand the whole process. You need to understand what it takes to make the money. But what we do in our digitizing process, we provide all the information from how do you select your land, how do you do planting, how do you manage your weeds, how do you manage pests and diseases, how do you do all the whole agronomy process, the good agricultural practices. But then we go a little bit further. We talk about value addition. We talk about processing. We talk about post-harvest handling. We also give it about uh, socioeconomics, basically gross margin analysis, so that you say, for example, if I only have one acre of land, then what what be, what enterprise makes sense? So for me, I will look at it from, from uh, a sense that you need to understand, look at, look at the gross margin analysis, and that is based on the land, based on the variety, based on the, uh, on the type of uh, method of agriculture you're doing, whether intensive or, or not intensive whether you're doing irrigated or not irrigated. So we provide all that information. So um, yes, the question is there, but we like to be very categorical that we don't want to just focus on misinformation. That if you do one neck of tomato, you get for, uh, of sale onions, you get 440,000, uh, I mean, uh, per season, which is basically the truth. But you need to understand what goes into that 440,000 so that you need to do gross margin analysis. 
that is part of the information that we provide mm -hmm. so that uh, you you look at you, before you choose the enterprise you know that i'm choosing this enterprise based on either the money i'm making based on the size of the land i have based on the method of culture i'm applying based on on, on 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 my interests and my passion based on the market availability all that comes into play because we also have cases where people have gone into an enterprise into agriculture they have gone to the selling farming, but they don't. They, they did not think about the market, so they have the proof. They don't know where to sell. Mm -hmm. They do not do market analysis. They do not connect with the people in the industry. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying we need to look at this holistically. Yet Carol has all the information, mm -hmm. but then again, we want to advise that look at it from end to end. Back to you, Ivan. Yeah, thanks. And while I still have you, Boniface, can we talk about value addition because that's also a big thing, um, and, and something that we're really trying to focus on, just going beyond the primary products that that are harvested. And maybe that could also be one of the areas, and I know you mentioned that a little bit, um, but that's the biggest accusation of the type of agriculture that we are practicing in this part of the world, that you know we're simply producing the food, but that there is so much more potential in value addition. Very to Yvonne, because uh, I think the reason why most farmers in, this, in our context, that's Africa, do not make much profit, is because we never focus on value addition. Well, I don't blame them because value addition involves investing in some agri-processing, uh, uh, but they don't have very expensive agri-processing plants, I mean the equipment, but that's where the money is. Um, I did a little bit farming uh, before I joined Caldro, and I was on the TV, I think, 2010, and some people from Netherlands saw me and you know, we, we visited me, uh, called Palm Netherlands, and they asked me, how much do you make for one piece of, of, of pineapple? I was making a gross of seven cylinders, and I was a very excited person that I'm making seven cylinders. Because when I started, people were making 10 cylinders, but now I was making seven cylinders. Mm -hmm. But when, when this gentleman told me what I could do with a, a value addition, I was going to make 1,000 Kenya cylinders for one piece of tomato. Because I would process juice from it, I would process tomato, uh, I mean, pineapple jam, pineapple uh, oil, all this, uh, all this. So that's where there's good money. The problem is that you need to invest in agri processing. So you can either invest in a big agri processing if you have the money, or you can invest in a small plant. That's what's happening in places like China, South Korea, uh, I mean, uh, where there are very small plant behind the house. We do not require much electricity and much water, and you can still do your process, you can start from there. So the problem here is that do we have money to invest? And then you have the technical know-how, mm -hmm. because for you to invest in agri-processing, you need to explore. But again, you could also partner with agri-processing companies and find a way of, of how you can work. But the truth of the matter is, research shows there's more money in value addition, practice shows there's more money in value addition, but also there's a the cost of investment. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that. Boniface Akuku, who's the director ICT at Calro, that's the Kenya Agricultural Livestock Research Organization. And they're saying they offer lots of information. I'm seeing quite a bit of your questions and comments as well. Uh, Kibut Kennedy, I says, um, I think is, is directing it at you, Gilad. Would you offer me an opportunity to train and work in your farm? I'm a graduate of BSc Horticulture and also just wanting some information. We're seeing a tweet from Maricos Heritage. You say, I'm in already. Uh, tell him to pick me next time. Oh, you're doing yam farming. Okay. So there's definitely lots of people who are doing um, you know, a lot of this out there. And, and you said, what, over 30%, 50% of the farmers you work with us, yeah, yeah. are below the age yeah, yeah. of 30. Yeah. And Wangari here is a young farmer herself. She calls herself Farmer on Fire. You can get that all across all social media. We're taking a break right now. When we come back, we'll talk about value addition a little bit more. And, and a lot of the the things that we've had trying to get youth in there. Uh, Gilad would know all about that with his work at Ameron. That was probably in a past life. We'll talk about that and much more when we return. This is Business Now. Youth in Agriculture is the conversation. The hashtag is Business Now. She almost caught us in the middle of our conversation because it's still been going on, um, you know, through the break. What a fascinating conversation today we're having on youth in agriculture. And um, one of the thoughts that, that crossed my mind when we we're preparing for this show, uh, for many of you who are in school, 
particularly boarding school, do you remember what the punishment was for something you'd done wrong? We did. You were sent to the farm to till <laughs> the land, um, which is perhaps something that needs to change because that is exactly where um, that is exactly where this whole notion you know, came up uh, about farming being more of a punishment than anything else. And so you wouldn't blame young people for saying, there is no way I'm going into farming, <laughs> you know, when they've had that perception of it. But we're s starting to say that that is changing. Um, listen, before we went on the break, Boniface from Calro talked about value addition. Uh, Wangari, I want to get your, your views on that because you've brought some products that you have from your farm, yes. um, you know, which are uh, a value addition. So, so tell us about some of the products that you make. Yes, so this is kombucha. It's an energy drink. It's made organically from tea leaves and some strawberries. You can see them floating in there yeah. as That's well. That's why it's red? Yes, so it's fermented strawberry juice, but it's fermented so that it has the probiotic benefits. Okay. And you so wait, it's fermented, so is it... I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with kombucha. Is, kombu is, it, is this alcoholic? <laughs> no, it's <Okay>. not. <laughs> <laughs> but if you add honey and you keep it ah. just a little while longer out okay. of the fridge, it will give you that Okay. This so is like a healthy Red Bull. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. Yes. Okay. That, that but this is more yes. natural. Uh -huh. When I think of it, I think of Miti Nijawa, how our traditions, uh -huh. our grandfathers used to know these secrets and we kind of abandoned them and we need to bring them back for a healthy gut and yeah. a healthy body. Right. And yes. what else do you have here? Um, so we have tea leaves as well. So these ones are just farmed direct from Moranga Hills. Okay. And, bef you know, it's a better quality and we can be able to have that for our Kenyan population as well. I see. So when I go around the country shooting videos, I get some products that I've given and I'm able to also give it to my fans and to people who listen to my YouTube channel so that you know I can share the journey with them and they can get to experience life. So there's kombucha yes. and there's tea leaves. There is this, there yeah. is even powdered vegetables. So I'd like to powdered mention what? Vegetables. Powdered vegetables. Okay. Yes, we Such are talking. As? We are selling convenience. So skuma wiki, we just dry it the same way our grandmothers used to dry it. Yeah. When it was out of season, you have vegetables as well because there were no fridges. So we dry it and then we grind it and then now it's in powder form. So in the morning when you're thinking, I need to make a smoothie, but I don't uh -huh. want to go through my fridge and, right. and you just put two spoons in your smoothie and you're good to go. So it's, it's about thinking simplicity, bringing cottage industries back and, and just thinking of ourselves, how can we actually make this and add shelf life to it ourselves? Yeah. Yes. The powdered skumawiki is, yes. is a first, I have to say. <laughs> I haven't heard of that, but it would be such a good way to get your vegetable portions in, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, yes. Know. Let me okay, add yeah. that. There is a government program mm -hmm. called KIRDI, yes. the Kenya Institute, Institute of Research and Development you. Institute. And yes. instead of having to invest in so yeah. much machinery, they do that for you. And because they are just close to KEBS, you can also get, be able yeah. to get KEBS certification. And, and not just because they're close to them. Let me tell you, um, if, if you watch this show, there is not as they were our first guest okay. on this on this show mm -hmm. which is now almost going on a year and a half yeah and without a doubt in almost every show each and every one of my guests mentions Kirdi it's a government institute and you get all the help the research yes. and by the way and when so you're there they incubate you yes. and, and help you get through all the certifications that mm -hmm. you require based on yes. on you know um, the products that you are putting in mm. if you get nothing out of business <laughs> now for the last year and a half it would be that that listen and it is a government institute yes. so you can go there and get all of these people who are making body butters and creams yes. and lotions and perfume and yes. you name it many of them have been uh, you know incubated at Kirdi so I just I just thought I would I'd mention that if there's yeah. nothing else you get from that um, but tell us about you know value addition and also you know some of the lessons you know when you were at Ameran and and I, I remember when Giuliani was made mm -hmm. uh, you know the ambassador for youth farming and I thought huh Okay, so how's that going to work? It worked um, really well. So it tell us really about well. that and, and, you know, just the whole idea of, of getting young people more interested uh, in that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, w with Giuli Giuliani at the time, what he was called the conscience of the street. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was 2010. He was, you know, 
height of, he's my brother, you know, I mean, he's, uh, we did a song together later and kind of closed close circle. But I chose him, then I was head of business development and PR for Amiran, and I chose him as our brand ambassador. We called it Poverty Eradication Ambassador. And we went around the country, Garissa, you know, you as far as you want. And we did training with Giuliani and we videoed and we hyped it up for people to see. And I mean, the take up was incredible. At the time, we had a partnership with the Youth Enterprise Development Fund. So we had the Agri Vijana loan, which was for the then the Amiran Greenhouse and Drip. Then we had a thousand schools. So you were talking about punishment being weeding. Yeah. And, and at, at our time, when we worked with Abbas Goulet with the Red Cross and we had the farmer's kit in a thousand schools, the prize was to go and turn on the drip irrigation mm -hmm. in the greenhouse, you know, yeah. and kids were looking forward to that. Right. So it's all in how you paint it and how you describe it. But working back then, and again, the evolution we've seen has been incredible. I think we're a lot more advanced than where we were back then in 2009, 2010, in terms of what's available today. Um, the social media discussion, the, 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 the technologies available to us, and so many more people engage. And like I said, I'm feeling it at the farm when guys are coming to me through Facebook, through LinkedIn, and, and they, they end up coming to the farm now as farmers that we're contracting and working with. And, and um, people who really invested money but are, are making money as a result of finding you on Facebook and, and you know modern technologies that they're incorporating in their own farms and things like that. So we're way advanced and the image of agribusiness, I think people get it a lot more than they did in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me, w w what is different? Because you say over half of the farmers that you work with are aged 30 and below. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the difference between those young farmers or um, you know, what are the characteristics of these farmers as opposed to what we keep hearing about the average age of farmers being, you know, the age of um, 57, 60. From what I've seen. From our parents and our grandparents. Yeah, yeah. How are they different and how are they approaching this, you know, differently? I really can't categorize the young people <laughs> yeah. in one group. We have young couples who are employed. We have a couple from Boomplay, you know, so where my muse, so I know them from the music and that's how they found me. Um, I got a guy coming to the farm tomorrow. He's 21 and he's starting small. He's doing an eighth of an acre um, up in, in El it and so he's coming to the farm tomorrow to collect his seeds and train and I'm pretty sure from the conversation he's scraped together everything he has to yeah. make this happen yeah. um, so obviously I have a massive respect for someone like that and I'll you know I'll take him and, and as far as I can and I'm sure he'll succeed uh, like I said all of our farmers are doing well you know it's it, it's really lucky you know w one thing we didn't talk about earlier which is also the market Boniface had, had, had mentioned it earlier but people are really worried about about that side. Mm -hmm. So for example, we try to address it by giving a contract, but at the end of the day, we're importing like a massive amount of, okay, let me not, let me not say the country, okay. but we're importing a massive, a massive amount of, if I say garlic, which is not as good quality as what we're growing here. So we're, 60 tons per day is being digested by Kenyans of garlic imported from one country in the world. And yet what we grow here is better. So for me, you know, challenge opportunity. There's mm -hmm. a, a, an opening to grow 60 tons of garlic mm -hmm. and push that out because ours is better. You know, and that just tells you how many more farmers we can onboard. And, and in terms of, you know, doing it at a young age, like I said, they're across the board. They're young couples, they're young hustlers, individuals, men, women, some are doing an eighth of an acre, some are doing half an acre, some are doing an acre. Um, some come from money, others have scraped together everything they have. Some are telephone farmers and some have been Shamba boys for so long, right. they've decided to try it by themselves, you know? Absolutely. So you really get a wide variety, but for sure, more and more and more are young folks. Yeah. And by the way, let me not rule out yeah. the older generation who are also <laughs> no. doing it, you know? That's People right. who are in retirement who are saying, okay, yeah. I've been dream dreaming about this, and no. now is my time to go and kind of really invest on the farm. And they're youthful in spirit, right. yeah. you know, just as much. Absolutely, and they will find that, you know, agriculture has moved along, you know, like you said, there's a lot more technology that accompanies the same. Um, Boniface, I, I want to get the last word from you on this um, you know back in the day we had agricultural extension services um, and this was you know 
members, extension services from government who would come and visit the farm and give advice. You would remember they were also big on things like artificial insemination. We remember all of these things. Um, what happened to that and how important is just having that extension service? Uh, thank you, Ivan. Now you can hear me? Yes. Yes, it is unfortunate that uh, the extension service is not as um, effective or, uh, or as vibrant as it was early days. Now, um, remember there are all those old days when we were young, uh, the number of farmers were few, mm. uh, the population was, has grown. So right now, I think by 2015, the number was one extension to 2,000 farmers. Uh, right now, is, I think maybe 3,000, 5,000. Unfortunately, the, most of them have not been retooled and uh, are also aged. Now, to bridge the gap, as a major stakeholder in agriculture, Calro decided to digitize this information, make it available in different channels. Uh, I talked about mobile apps, talked about SMS messaging, I talked about call center, I talked about different web portals, so different um, uh, models. Secondly, there's a new, there's a new uh, type of extension that's emerging. There's a lot of private sector actors that are actually doing extension work. And uh, they already, we, we already have, like under the World Bank program, we are one million farmer platform where we are reaching more than one million farmers, basically by collaboration with the private sector. So uh, this was another emerging form of extension. The agrobet, the input suppliers and the output suppliers, they become the first source of information requests uh, by farmers. So what we have done to avoid misinformation and to avoid this category or this new emerging extension of misleading farmers, we have made the information available to this emerging form of extension. Two, we are collaborating through public-private partnership mm -hmm. with this form of extension so that we don't create a gap. Because if, a, if you create an information vacuum, then if people will look for information everywhere, they will cheat, they will lie, they will tell them wrong things. Yeah. So I would say that Caro has made all the, all the, done everything within our powers to fill that gap of extension by digitizing, making them available, and also by partnering with the emerging form of extension. I just want to say this in closing, uh, Vaughan, I, don't, I think I'm not sleepy if I don't say this. I think it's not only that uh, we are being punished in school with agriculture, but I think even the way we will be talked to, even the debate in school, the teacher is better than a farmer, and yeah. always the teacher would always wait. Also, you will always be told by your parents, work hard so they don't become a farmer. Mm. So it's not yet the punishment. It's the way we have presented agriculture. Yeah. It's the way we have denied uh, people the information. And that's why as Carlo, we are coming in to, 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 to in, our, in a small way, contribute to that gap. Back to you, Yvonne. Thank you very much, Boniface Akuku, Director ICT at Calro. By the way, where do people find you on social media? Yes, on social media, uh, we have Karo Mukulima. You'll find us Karo Mukulima on social media. Uh -huh. We have Twitter handlers. When you go to our website, you'll find all uh, all those. Uh, just go to www.karo.org. You'll find all our social media handlers. Okay. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. You can also find me on my social media handler, boniface.akuku. So just if you just Google my name, uh, you will always find all those Google Caro, you will always find all those. We have already made those in order available. Caro uh, of Nukulima, our Facebook, so all that in our website. So we also have a call center. We already have a, a number there on, our, on, 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 our, on the website. So just go to our website and you find everything. Great. And you said we can you know, also speak to uh, a human because sometimes that's what we want. Thank you very much. Boniface Akuku, Director ICT Caro. Google him. Um, it reminds me of a song. <laughs> Google me, baby. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Boniface, and for joining us live from Navasha. You get like 30 seconds each, one last sentence. If there's anything that you know our viewers take away from the conversation today, Wangari, I'll start with you. Yes, mine is start. Anal analysis paralysis is real, so just start. Give yourself time. Think of it as a laboratory. Learn on the process. You will not get make millions overnight, so just start. Then get into the community. We have many people. We love farmers. We love people who are doing what we are doing. Yes, so, and yeah. Indeed, and we can find you on Twitter at FarmerOnFire1. On Twitter, on YouTube, 
That's my brand name. Fama yeah. on Fire. Fama on Fire. Google, yeah. Google her. <laughs> <laughs> Gilad? <laughs> Um, for me, it's just really, you know, go out and do it. The most available means of making money in Kenya slash Africa is agriculture. So go out and do research, you know, um, fight for what's yours. I think it's very cool. I think there's a lot of money to be made. Um, so, so really just go out and try. Um, I'm, I'm a fan. I have been for years. And I really believe in youth in agribusiness in Kenya. I think we have the power to do that. We absolutely yeah. do. Thank you. And for all the young farmers you work with. And, and good luck, by the way. Best of luck to the 21-year-old who's coming tomorrow. Yeah, to yeah. Get some and by the way, you can find us on yeah. Instagram. It's Ole Raha. Ole Raha. And me, it's just Gilad. Like, yeah. like Boniface says, Google, Google Gilad. Me. <laughs> Google me and you'll find me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. and all that. Um, but Ole Raha is on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's lots of interaction there. Thank you, Gilad Thank you Miller. so much. Thank you, Wangari.